Tim Lohr is music pastor of Calvary Church, Naperville, Illinois, and manages a rather large group of singers and musicians who come together each week as true worshipers of Christ. He brings several years of experience and wisdom to this ministry and is quite loved by all who serve in worship with him. We had a conversation recently about all the ins and outs of putting a Christmas concert or a music production together from start to finish. We chatted about diversity in the church and the slow decline of choirs in churches across America. Come join my conversation with Pastor Tim Lohr and experience a few clips from a Christmas at Calvary concert. Um, tell me the first song that you did um, as a child, the very first song oh. you ever did, whether it was singing or playing. That is a good question. Well, the first song I learned to play on the piano and sing was I Will Enter His Gates. Yeah. And my dad had an old chorus book, and I didn't know what the chord symbols meant, but I looked at the chorus book and I figured out that if I, I knew just enough about chords that if I figured out how to play an E flat chord, I could play that chord and sing, and then I would look for the next chord and play that chord and sing, and that's how I learned to play piano and sing. So did you, so you obviously grew up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. uh, was your dad a pastor? Or? No, my dad wasn't a pastor, but he was a song leader of our church. Song leader. Yeah. Okay. They call it song leader back then. Yeah. Uh, toward the end of, uh, of the time that, that I was home, things kind of shifted towards worship. Uh, before it was just turning your hymnal to number 140 and then sing the hymn, then you'd turn to the next one. But then choruses came in in the 70s and 80s and things changed. And so so how, many, how many years have you been involved in music? I, uh, let me just rephrase that question. You eventually went to college, you went to school yeah. for music. Um, mm -hmm. Music performance, piano performance? No, it was, uh, it was a, um, an Assembly of God college, mm -hmm. um, Central Bible College in Springfield, Missouri. And I was called to be a music pastor. So uh, during my senior year of high school, I felt like the Lord called me into that. I got in, involved in music in high school and um, I had a pastor who suggested that would be a good fit for me and, and um, the Lord put me on that path. I've not turned back since, 28 yeah. years. Okay. Now you've been at Calvary Church in Naperville, which is our church, yeah. and you are my music pastor yeah. and you've been with us for how many years now? Uh, 11 years, 11 yeah, years. just over 11 years. Right. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to talk about Christmas, because mm -hmm. as you can see from the decorations, yeah. this is going to be our little Christmas show. Yeah. Um, uh, my, some of my favorite uh, Christmas songs are the classics, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know, the first Noel, Silent Night, and, yeah. but yet there's a lot of, there's a lot of new music that's coming on, on, mm -hmm. um, on the scene nowadays. So if you can just give us just a little taste of, of uh, some of the history of Christmas music, if you, what, what's your yeah. feeling about that? Uh, I did look into this a little bit, knowing that I was going to talk about this. Mm -hmm. and. Most of the songs that we sing now that are traditional classic Christmas songs were written in the 1800s. That year, the, the 1800s, maybe mid-1800s to the early 1900s. And um, so that's Silent Night, that's the first Noel, that's so many songs were written in that time period. And uh, I think the reason why they stuck is because that's the same time period where hymnals started to be printed. And so once a song gets into a hymnal, then that hymnal gets reprinted, or people see what's in one hymnal and it gets printed into another one. So these songs that have lasted for you know, so many, uh, almost a century now, um, over a century, it's because they've, they've been printed and they just kept being sung. Mm -hmm. And so songs that, that get a wide, um, people sing them all over the world, those are the songs that tend to stick. And so there's some new ones that get that kind of of singing, but not as many as what happened in those early days when those hymnals were printed. Mm -hmm. Probably if, if I had a favorite Christmas song, a newer Christmas song, it would be uh, Mary Did You Know? Because mm -hmm. that is one song that is, um, that is sung by so many secular artists. And what I love about that song in particular is that like the pentatonics sing it in their concerts. Um, CeeLo Green, it's on his Christmas CD. And these artists are singing the name of Jesus. They're okay. singing about his power and his strength and how he heals and he, he makes the blind see and the deaf hear. And, and they're singing that story of Christmas. And so uh, 
One thing that's special to me about Christmas music is that it contains Christ. You can't sing a Christmas song without saying the word Christ. So um, I think that Christmas music holds a special place um, in America as part of the, the American culture, and but also around the world. Mm -hmm. Now, many churches, as, as Calvary has done over the years, have done massive productions. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just, uh, there's so much that's involved yeah. in that. And I'm sure you've been involved. The, the ones that we do now are not anywhere like we used to, mm -hmm. um, given people's schedules and time yeah. commitments and things like that. So t tell us what, what's involved in putting on something, a production like that, or what we do now, even at Calvary, from the beginning stages to the time that, quote unquote, the curtain goes down? Well, you start with a concept. At Calvary Church, we typically have a sermon series for the month of December. And so the choir concert weekend will be usually the third weekend of the month. So whatever our theme is for that year, um, I try to incorporate some songs around that theme. But when I'm looking at what we do now, which is a Christmas concert, I try to find just great music. Um, and I don't try to find one style of music, I just look for great songs. So that it could be a country sounding song, it could be a classical sounding song, it could be a gospel sounding song, it could be a very traditional hymn. And if I, I found that if I can just collect a really good grouping of songs, then the Lord will help me weave those together mm. with scriptures and videos and, and dance and, and other things that go along with it. And we're blessed also to be able to have an orchestra, a live orchestra at Calvary at Christmas time. And so that I think about that too. What is the orchestra going to play? What kind of orchestration is, is available for this? Or what can we have written for this? Mm -hmm. um, but then it's uh, like I'm uh, Christmas music, you have to plan months in advance because you have to teach the choir. You need to get all the tech things ready. And, and if there are any drama parts, you need to have those parts written. So it's really a um, end of August through, through the concert type of situation. Mm -hmm. So. You have a team of people that, that work with you on this, is that correct? I do, and yeah. You, but you do a lot. I do, I do a lot. I am a little bit of a um, hands-on, probably too much hands-on, but yeah. I do enjoy it. Well, one of the things I, as being a part of that ministry and, and serving under you for as long as you've been there, is that you, you do care about the, the volunteers. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're a volunteer choir. And we're what, yeah. about 70, 80 strong, maybe? Yeah, for Christmas almost. we'll have at least 90 in the choir. Yeah, because yeah, people fight over which yeah. chair they're going right. to sit in, you yeah. know, kind of thing. Um, but it's been a pleasure, it's been an honor to actually oh. serve with you because Thanks. you carry these productions. It's, it's like a burden for you. It's like mm -hmm. a, a passion. You turn into a slightly different person when we're, mm -hmm. we're putting all of this together. You had, had made the statement once, and I actually read an article um, in a Christian magazine about how it seems there's a trend for churches moving away from having the choir mm -hmm. and doing more of worship team structure yeah. or worship for their worship sets. Yeah. It, 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 why do you feel that? is the case? Do you think maybe music pastors are burnt out? Uh, well, or is I, it just yeah. a trend? I think there's several reasons. I think number one, it's a lot of work. Um, choir's a lot of work. It's, you know, it's weekly rehearsals yeah. with a big group of people, with volunteers. And if a church isn't really ready to put the resources and the personnel behind it, it's really hard to do. Um, the second reason would be that it, it just doesn't seem cool enough. Like, most churches turn on the lights and there's you know, haze and lights and all that. So it just became something that wasn't very cool to have. And so um, churches are returning back to choirs though. Okay. Even some of the leading churches um, like Elevation Church and Hillsong and all these churches, maybe not every week, but you'll see choirs in all those churches. Mm -hmm. 
and it's more of a worship choir. Um, but I think the choir is important for churches because there's just an energy and there's, there's a, a presence that a choir can bring that a group of singers, in my opinion, just can't bring to a stage. I also like the fact that when you come to Calvary Church, it doesn't matter um, your, your nationality, it doesn't matter your age, it doesn't matter how you look or how much money you make, it, it doesn't matter. You're going to see somebody like you on the stage. And I think that's really important, just that people come into Calvary and feel like, yeah, I can be a part of this place because I feel like I'm, I am like these people. Yeah. I, I want to ditto that because there was a, a, a young lady who's close to my age, uh, was a part of Calvary many years ago, and they recently started coming back. And uh, I was on worship team one Sunday. Mm -hmm. She ran in the back and she said, I just love this. She says, there are people like me on your worship team and in your choir. I've often said to you, I don't know how many more years I'm going to be a part of this. Yeah. Will it be the time for me to step back and, you know, ch cheer on the younger, the younger crowd when that time comes? So it, it's, it's been wonderful and I, I do appreciate it. And you mentioned too about the multicultural thing. We sing a very broad mix mm -hmm. of music. Let's yeah, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I, I like to paint with a broad brush when it comes to music. Like um, this past Sunday, we sang a song that I guess you could say was, I really wouldn't call it country, our pastor did. And then we'll sing, sing things that are very, very um, gospel sounding. Mm -hmm. And then we'll sing, sing things that are a little bit more traditional too. So um, I don't like to get bored with music. I think if you sing the same thing over and over again, and the choir does trend more towards gospel just because that's, um, we do it well, I think. And so, you know, you lean towards your strengths. And uh, our pastor likes energy right before he comes up to speak. And so energy doesn't always have to be upbeat, but um, those gospel songs just have a little bit of passion and energy that brings the level of worship up. And um, I think that's important for uh, our services. If you could say something to, say, someone that's watching our program. Mm -hmm. uh, they like music, but they're, they're warming the bench. They think they don't really have a voice, but maybe they do. Mm -hmm and they have a passion or they may want to, you know, reach out and to join a choir yeah. or sing with a group, what would you, what advice would you give them? I would just say take the first step. Find out how to get involved. At Calvary Church it's very easy. You just call our music office and it's just, you have to have a short interview and sing Amazing Grace for me. It's yeah. very simple. It can be a little daunting. It can be a little embarrassing at times, but I would say if you feel called to do it, just, you know, just open the door. If if, if you can sing, then you're going to be able to do it. If you can't, then they'll gently say, maybe there's a different ministry for you. But yeah. if you feel like God's giving you the gift, then you should be using it. Amen. That's yeah. good. That's good. Anything else you want to add? Like, what are we doing this Christmas? Well, I'm still looking for music. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll just be doing a, a, a great package of music. And... Um, uh, hopefully there'll be some some surprise songs in there. there. I always like to challenge us, or I'm, so I'm still looking for that song that really challenges us. It was a choir we had one last year that I, I didn't think we were going to be able to do, and we nailed it. So I was very it happy was about good. that. Oh
Going back to something we talked about a minute ago about the age age in choir, we have we have a man in his 90s in our choir, mm -hmm. and we have somebody that's 19. I just think that's that's awesome from 19 to 90, and um, I think the Lord gives us all a voice. Every voice is unique. Our voice is just like a fingerprint. There's no other voice like your voice. Mm -hmm. So if you're not using it, then the Bible says the rocks will cry out in your spot. So we don't want that. You sang a song um, maybe three Christmases ago. Uh, it was a duet with another pastor that was on staff. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was taken from um, an Nelson opera. Nelson Dorma. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, it was, the words were, Christ is born. Yeah. You know, to, uh, what, what was it like singing it? I know what it was like listening to yeah. it and backing you up. But what, yeah. what, what was it like actually singing it? You know, it was a great experience to sing that song. Uh, we, we didn't rehearse it very much before, just because his schedule, my schedule, we didn't get. So the, the, um, we rehearsed it twice with the choir and the orchestra. So the third time we sang it was in front of people. Um, so there was a freshness and a newness about it, almost a little bit of a um, nervousness about it that was kind of exciting for us to be able to sing it. And so um, every time we sang it, it got just a little bit better. And uh, um, being able to sing something very traditional like that, just to actually get to use things that I learned in voice lessons. Not that, not that worship doesn't involve those types of vocal skills, but it's a little different when you're singing notes that are high and mm -hmm. holding them out. Mm -hmm. And it needs to sound a little bit more professional. I had so. never heard you sing the Lord's Prayer until oh. we were in Africa. Yeah. And you just, we thought you were just going to share a message. Yeah. And all of a sudden you started singing the Lord's Prayer. And I think the hair on my head just kind of oh, stood wow. straight up. It's absolutely beautiful. If, if uh, anyone would like to hear this man sing, you need to come to Calvary Church in Naperville. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, sure. Pastor Tim Lord, Calvary Church, Naperville. embarrassing musical moment my most embarrassing musical moment it's probably when 
one of my pastors uh, came up on stage because I didn't sing the third verse of a hymn and uh, he stopped the whole service. It, I had only been there a few weeks and he said, Tim, we don't, we sing the third verse in this church and he's turned around went and sat back down in the front pew and so I sing the third verse. That was it? it yeah. Oh, that, that is embarrassing. embarrassing. Yeah, that is embarrassing. <laughs> I would be embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's another question for you. Um, chocolate or broccoli? You need to define that some, some more for me, but it would be chocolate. I knew, I knew you'd say that. Yeah. Tea or Diet Coke? Diet Coke. Uh, no yeah, you'd say that too. 